Welcome back to my channel, lovely people. I am Giovanna. I love to do tarot pick a cards and readings in general on this channel. So today's reading, um, I decided to go ahead and do another love, you know, pick a card reading. And this theme for today's pick a card is what you can expect for your next relationship. What are the overall energies? What the person will be like? Anything the cards would like to tell me, I'm going to go ahead and disclose it to you guys. So with pile number one, we have opal. Pile number two, we have pyrite. And pile number three, we have amethyst. If you need more time choosing, go ahead and pause the video. Timestamps will always be in the description box as well as in the comments below. I can't wait to see what the universe has in store for you guys. Hello, pile number one who chose the beautiful opal. Let's go ahead and dive right into your reading and see what's going on and who you can expect to be in your next relationship with, what the overall energies of that relationship will be. Starting off with the Two of Cups, clarified by the King of Wands. Then we have the Sun, clarified by the Seven of Cups. Then we have the Moon, clarified by the Queen of Swords. And then the Ten of Cups, clarified by the Nine of Pentacles. So right off the bat, I feel like this relationship is going to deal a lot with growing and just overall... Um, balance trying to find the balance trying to find um the the motivation to keep going the discipline to hold up your end of the bargain because it does take two to <laughs> it does take two individuals to come together and maintain and you know water and nurture of relationship in order for it to be long lasting and fulfilling you know you can't just look at a plant and not water it and expect it to grow into a beautiful tree you can't do that you need two individuals to come together and do their part you know 50 50 i understand sometimes you guys have bad days and it could be like 60 40 or 70 30 but those are only some days you know if that's the energy long term overall then you might have a problem because you might not feel emotionally satisfied. However, in this relationship, if we look at the first card, the Two of Cups, I see that this is a very equal give and take. There's a lot of balance. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of chemistry. I feel like this person is someone who not only understands you mentally and physically, but I feel like they can read between the lines. This is someone who is very emotional and they're very open to communication. Like, they can tell what you're lacking and you can see what you're like what they're lacking like what you aren't giving enough what's hurting them it's very clear to pick up on these energies and kind of overall feel it and see it and understand where you could do better where you've done wrong where you can improve and vice versa i feel like this person and you just the overall chemistry is spicy <laughs> i feel like it's very very spicy because we have the King of Wands clarifying the Two of Cups. And to me, that's like a very intense yet passionate, you know, unconditional type of loving energy. You know, you can look at each other from across the room and just feel this instant connection. And it's like everything else is ablaze. Like you just feel, I don't want to say turned on, but like you just feel so consumed in a good way. You know, it's not toxic. But you just feel so consumed and so happy and just everything else doesn't matter because you're feeling so good for the first time in a long time. And with the King of Wands, this person could be a Leo. You could be a Leo. I do see just a little bit of everything. You know, we have two Leo cards in my opinion. We have the Sun and the King of Wands. So you could be a Leo um, or they could have a lot of Leo um characteristics or a lot of leo placements in their chart i feel like this person would be very very attractive um i don't really like to describe physical features because everybody has their own type of taste <laughs> is what i want to say so and plus like i have so many of you beautiful souls watching and describing your ideal person and whoever might come into your life isn't realistic for me if i'm being honest so i see this person being very mature this person being very passionate, very romantic. Oh my God, yes, romantic. That is the word I was looking for. You know, they're very giving. They're very open to giving, to wanting to see you happy, to wanting to see that smile across your face, to wanting to see you warm and enjoying their embrace, you know? This is someone who isn't one to quit very easily. Like, let's say you guys get into an argument. This is someone who isn't gonna add fuel to the fire, but is going to try to stop and see 
and analyze what's going on, where, where the miscommunication is happening. You know, they're trying to figure out what they could do better to better please you and to please the relationship overall. Next with the Sun card, clarified by the Seven of Cups. The Sun card to me is, I just think it's so funny. If you look at the video right now, you see the sun right next to the moon. And I just think this is a very beautiful parallel, in my opinion. So the fact that we have the Sun card, you know, being clarified by the Seven of Cups, I feel like sometimes too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Um, I feel like this is telling me to tell you guys to remember your boundaries. Like, everything is very beautiful. You know, everything can be very happy-go-lucky. But don't allow that to cloud your vision when you get into bumps in the road. You know, like the honeymoon phase is something that's coming to mind. Like the honeymoon phase is something that feels so amazing. And then boom, you guys have your first real fight or you guys have your first real argument. And you're kind of like, I don't want to say overthinking it, but you're really analyzing everything up until that moment. And you're like, is it really worth it? Do I still want to be with this person? I thought they understood me better. Yada, 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 whatever. So it's like, I don't want you to be blinded by how beautiful and warm it is because it is warm and beautiful. It's love. You know, you deserve to, to be happy in your partnership, you know, and like they also deserve to be happy with you because I'm sure you're an incredible person and super cool to hang out with. So of course they're going to be happy, you know, being your partner. <laughs> but what I do feel like is I know there's this proverb, I think it's an Arabic proverb that's coming to mind um, that I read somewhere, but too much um, too much sun will turn you into a desert, you know, and it's basically saying that too much happiness can sometimes dry you out because then you're not going to be used to the sadness, you're not going to appreciate the happiness, the good moments, you know, the special moments if there's, if you're overdoing it, you know, if you're saying I love you too much, if you're you know, if you're doing the, the little things that you thought once were special because you didn't expect it, if you overdo it, it's going to lose its meaning. And I feel like that's something I see with the Sound of Cups. I feel like if you overdo giving each other gifts, if you overdo telling each other your secrets right off the bat instead of allowing that nice little mysterious phase, allowing things to unfold as they come, I feel like it's going to drive away or it might drive them crazy in a good way. Crazy in the aspect that they know too much too soon and it can be overwhelming. So I feel like your advice is to, yes, you feel very delightful. You feel very warm. You feel very happy. Like you feel like you can be vulnerable. Yes. But don't give everything away too soon. You know, don't allow this person to make so many promises if you know they might not be able to keep them all, you know, and I'm only saying this so that you guys don't get disappointed, so you guys can prevent yourselves from getting too attached too easily. However, don't block yourself off. I'm not saying this person is going to do you dirty, but what I am saying is to take things one day at a time. Take things one step at a time, and you won't regret it because it's not going to be overwhelming for you or for the other individual involved in this relationship, involved in this partnership. You know, it's just out of respect you know, because you guys are respecting each other's boundaries, your wants, your needs, your desires. Allow the future to come as it comes. Do not force anything because if you're forcing something, then it's not meant to be. Whatever's meant to be yours will always be yours without forcing it, okay? And then we have the moon card that's clarified by the Queen of Swords. So the fact that we have the moon card, it's telling me you guys are very intuitive, okay? You guys don't always see the the things other people see what i'm trying to say is like you guys are very good at seeing what people aren't trying to say what people aren't trying to expose themselves for doing you know sometimes you pick up on feelings emotions and basically the unsaid of what other people are trying to leave unsaid that they don't want to bring up whether it's past arguments um their sadness you know you could look at someone and you could really tell their emotions you know, you can tell that they're depressed, they're going through a hard time, they need a hug, they need someone to be there, they're really pissed off. Like, you look at them and you can really tap into their emotion. I feel like some of you guys watching this might be an empath. Um, I also feel like you guys are very intuitive. And as I'm saying this, you guys are like, uh-huh, yep, that's me. I also want to say maybe the moon cycle might have to do with you guys. You guys could also be a Pisces because I know the moon for me represents Pisces. Um, I also feel like there's two sides to this love story, you know, again, don't, don't keep it like, uh, when I say two sides, I mean like, 
you know, there is a good side, you know, we all have our highs and we all have our lows, but don't separate them, you know, don't try to glorify one side versus the other because it's only going to leave you disappointed and upset when you do go through the lows with your partner. You know, the partnership, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is to choose to continue to do the partnership with that person every single day. And so I feel like this person is showing you and you're showing them different sides of each other that you might have not even known you had. Like you're developing different sides together. Like you're growing, you're going through it. You're seeing different sides. You're understanding whether or not you like them, whether or not you need to clear them, whether or not you need to improve them. <laughs> and then with the Queen of Swords energy, this is telling me that some of your boundaries might be very stiff. You know, there might be some baggage. I, just, I don't know why I heard daddy issues. <laughs> there might be some baggage. There might be some daddy issues that are coming into play where you guys are trying to advance or you guys trying to talk about certain things in your relationship and either you or, or them or both of you guys have very touchy boundaries around certain issues. Like you guys aren't willing to be open regarding these boundaries like you guys don't even want to talk about it like the moment like let's say somebody mentions kids you're like nope can't talk about it nope or somebody mentions marriage you're like nope just because maybe your parents had a terrible marriage and so that mind that little ptsd you carry from you know witnessing your parents marriage or maybe you weren't in a shitty marriage you know carries over and same thing with that this could literally apply to anything else. This could also apply to your spending habits, but because this is a love reading, um, it's telling me that your love behaviors, your patterns might be a result from, from old wounds that need to be healed. So the moon is showing you these nasty, dirty cuts that maybe aren't healed yet that you guys both need to heal. So for the next card, we have the Ten of Cups, which is ironic because I just mentioned children <laughs> and there's children on the card clarified by the nine of pentacles so the ten of cups you guys will both feel happiness inside and out people around you that are friends with the two of you will tell you how much they support the relationship because not necessarily that you need their support but more they feel like you already know that they support you like they just see you guys getting along you guys are very compatible with one another you guys if you want to be a family you guys can be a family you know you can have kids you can have fur babies you can have different properties, whatever you guys want, you guys will achieve together. Like it's an overall balance, I want to say. Like you make up for things they do not have and vice versa. They make up thing they make up for things you don't have. And you guys can grow together and help each other out. Like you guys aren't like I don't feel like this relationship is is where you guys try to put each other down, you know, because there's certain relationships where you know, people get very competitive without even realizing they're getting competitive. This is not the type of vibe. The vibe I'm getting here is you guys point out, or you guys understand and realize the boundaries, and you guys are trying to work past them to better each other, to better, like, yourselves, you know, and then the relationship as a whole. I also feel like this relationship, because we have Nine of Pentacles here at the bottom, I feel like this relationship might come in slow. It might be something you guys have been manifesting for a while, and this could be confirmation for some of you guys. Um, some of you guys probably heard everything I said and were checking off little tick marks off your paper <laughs> because I hit the nail on the head, and if I did, please let me know. But um, the Nine of Pentacles, it's like you're waiting for the last fruit to finally ripen because you know the the rest of the nine fruits you have right now are at its peak and now you're just waiting for the last one you know you've done all the hard work you're just waiting for them to pop in the nine of pentacles to me is a very good card you know it's very abundant it's very happy it's very patient which to me is representing what the overall relationship is going to feel like for you guys which for me feels like happiness like you guys are in a growth mindset you're not in a scarcity you know there's never enough love instead there's so much love you don't know how to give it you don't know how to express it you know that's the type of mindset i'm picking up for this connection i'm gonna go ahead and start flipping over some oracle cards for you guys the first one we have is breathe so you could have anxiety or the person um on the other side of this relationship could have anxiety because you guys uh, might have gone through a lot in the past and and you guys don't expect one another to actually make things work like you didn't expect this relationship maybe 
to actually be as deep and as connected as you thought it would be. Mm -hmm. However, because it turned out that way, you guys are forever grateful, but I feel like you guys might be overthinkers, which I know I can relate to. Then the next card we have is happy, happy. So I definitely, as I mentioned before, I feel like this connection has balance, you know? When I see the sun and the moon, it reminds me of being in yang. You know, you have your highs and you have your lows, but it's the overall balance of the connection that really makes it worthwhile. If you've seen Mulan, it reminds me of Mulan with General Shang in the second movie, and Mulan 2 when they have the necklaces, and their relationship is really put to the test. You know, their trust, their love for one another. Maybe they like Mulan, I don't know. The next one we have is You Are Good Enough, Full Moon and Virgo. Please, please know that you are good enough, you know? You you are worthy of love, you are enough, and if people make you feel like you aren't, walk away from them because you deserve better, okay? The next one we have is Prosperity Lies Ahead, New Moon and Taurus. There is actually a new moon by the time I post this, if you guys are watching this when I post, there's a blue moon in Taurus, if I'm not wrong, on the 31st of October, which is great for manifesting. Um, but yeah, prosperity lies ahead. Like all your dreams will come true if you let it. If you let this person in, if you allow it to unfold, if you trust your intuition, because I know you guys who chose pot number one, you guys are very intuitive. Uh, trust your intuition. Obviously, be on the lookout for red flags because even though I could tell you this person's great, you might meet someone who isn't, and I don't want you to stay with them over something I said. Obviously, I trust you guys, and I know you guys will make the right call. I have my whimsical lover. Oops, I have some whimsical lover oracle cards. I'm gonna go ahead and start flipping them to just get the overall energies for love. So the first one, ooh, we have endless passion, nothing but an intensive passion between the sheets in everyday life. Oops, <laughs> I'm gonna put this one there. The next one we have is boundaries. This is funny because I mentioned boundaries earlier. Ah ha ha ha! I love it when my cards do that. Do not be afraid to set your boundaries and assert them in order to protect yourself from their malice intentions. Please do. And I don't think they have malice intentions. I think it's more uh, protection from yourself. Like, you don't want to give too much too soon. Your next card is let it go. Allow things to flow and accept the uncertainty of what is and will become. If it's meant to be, it will be. Again, that's literally so funny because I said that earlier. I think this also goes hand in hand with breathe. I apologize for my ring light. It does that. And the last one, oh my god, children. I pointed out children, you guys. Like children, you will have children with this partner. If you want to have a family, I feel like this is someone who, you know, they might have kids. You might have kids. I feel like this is someone overall who's really good with kids. They might also embody, I just got this now, but they might also embody like a very childlike energy when it comes to something they're excited about or like, when they find a, something new that they want to share with you, they almost look like a kid out of like, in terms of their excitement because they're so excited to share with you. This is your reading pile number one. I hope it resonated. Please like, comment, and subscribe if it did. I love you guys so much. And yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hello, lovely people who chose pie, right? Fiddle focus. Oh. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in and see what's up with you and your next partner, aka your next relationship, what you can expect, what the overall energies will be like, what spirit will tell me, what the universe and your guides will tell my guides to tell me. So right off the bat, we have the Knight of Cups clarified by the stars. Then we have the wands, the Three of Wands clarified by the moon. Then we have this, the Ten of Swords, clarified by the Emperor, the Ace of Wands, and the Two of Wands. These two came out together, which was really funny. Um, I think you guys are the only pile that has that, by the way. Clarified by the Five of Cups. So, right off the bat, you guys have a decent amount of Major Arcana, now that I'm looking about. You guys have three Major Arcana, so... You might have... You might notice like three is a weird number or like a specific number for you guys. You might see three, three, three a lot. Things might happen in threes for you, things like that. So let's jump right in with the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is someone who comes in and they're pretty emotional when it comes to confessing their love for you. They are someone who is very emotional. They're 
They're very connected with what they want and what they don't want in relationships. They're very emotionally mature as well. So they're not someone who doesn't know the value of your feelings or know the value of your words. If anything, they know them and they appreciate them. This is someone who really takes consideration of the little things. Like any little thing you do genuinely will either make their day or break it. This is someone who, they could be a Pisces, you know. I don't really like to attach too much zodiac signs with you get with with these, but I do see Pisces with the moon and with the star. I feel Aquarius vibes. Um, <laughs> I'll just state those two because those are, and the Emperor. I do feel Aries, but with the Knight of Cups, if you look at the picture, she was about to take a little like dip in the the river if she didn't finish, and this person is watching her. And she kind of sees him, kind of doesn't. She doesn't want to say anything because she's kind of vulnerable. But he's coming in and he's going to offer, I don't know, to scrub her back or something. <laughs> you know, but what I'm trying to say is that this person fancies you. This person admires you. This person is someone you could be vulnerable with. And they won't make you feel bad. This is someone who wants to be there with all the random things you do. I also feel like because we do have a star or the stars in this deck, um, it's very divide, like it's, it's timed to a, an extent where you don't really believe it until it's happened. You know, it's divine timing. It's the angels and spirit working together to make sure you two come together at the same time. It's not something that just, oh, I met them on Tinder. <laughs> no, it's something very specific. You know, they're, they're like, like, they're like, uh, knitting like these strings of fate and it reminds me of hercules you know how they have like the the fates who cut the the string of megara megara i apologize if i say your name wrong meg <laughs> she i don't know why that that came into my head but i feel like the strings are bringing you two together like you guys are finally on the right path to meeting one another and i don't want to say finally like it's about time it's more like you guys both had to go through this glow up mentally, spiritually, and physically before you guys could meet each other because if you didn't and you met each other before, you guys wouldn't have lasted or you guys wouldn't have learned the lessons you needed to. So again, I feel like I'm not really feeling karmic, but I am feeling more like a, just a soulmate connection, like someone who's really meant to lift you up, to show you better, to teach you better to make you see the world in a way you've never seen before. So with the Three of Wands um, being clarified by the Moon card, the Three of Wands is all about warmth. It's all about um, new perspective, seeing things differently, you know, taking a chance on something you never thought you would. In this deck, the Three of Wands talks about warmth between two people. It talks about intimacy. So I feel like for you guys, you're your next relationship besides being very intimate it's gonna have a level of intimacy you've never experienced with anyone else right things i mean you can't really compare your past relationships to your new one because you're in a new headspace you're in a new direction in life you know better like you know more than you did back then so you're a different person than you were back then so don't ever compare yourself but what i am trying to say is that if you were to compare you couldn't even find the right words to describe how you feel in this new relationship because it's a new level. It's something you've never reached before and you'll only continue to go to bigger heights, to like higher levels, I guess you could say, on the love ladder, if that exists. But I feel like a very, I feel like a, a very strong sense of longing. Like you guys have been wanting this for a while and you're just waiting and you're waiting and you're getting sick of waiting and you're going through heartache because you've done you know, you haven't done anything bad, you've loved, you've loved so much that it hurts to the point where other people took your love for granted and hurt you. I'm, I'm really picking up that sense right now. I know I just kind of skipped, but I feel that a lot with the Ten of Swords clarified by the Emperor. Um, that came in really strongly. I feel like maybe you guys have been cheated on, you guys were in a third party situation, whether or not you were the mistress or you were the miss being cheated on, you know, you don't have to be a woman for this to resonate. But what I am saying is that it hurt a lot, you know? And so I feel like that's something you're still recovering with. And you're like, I never want to be in that position again. You know, I'm done. I'm going to, 
I'm prepared to cut people out who don't serve me. You know, I'm just gonna start laying the foundation for what I do want and not accept anything less. Which I applaud you guys because that takes balls. But going back to the Three of Wands, <laughs> going back to the Three of Wands, the Moon card is really sticking out to me. Pile number one also had the Moon card, by the way. So if you felt, you know, indecisive between pile number one and pile number two, you might want to watch pile number one because there might be a message in that pile for you just because we do have two similar cards, to be honest. Um, so the Moon is, is for me, like, you guys are seeing sides of love you never even thought you needed to see or wanted to see. And this is talking about, again, emotional maturity, maturity overall and intimacy and just that of life. Like you guys are seeing things differently than ever before. And I also feel like this is just gonna help improve your mindset and the relationship you guys are having. Um, I feel like this is someone who is going to see all sides of you, just like you're gonna see all sides of them. You know, for worse or for better, for the highs and for the lows. Like, this is someone who, when you meet them, you're going to see all the good things, right? You're going to see everything you like at face value. And then once you get to know them, you're going to see where the good things come from. And from and and from the, <laughs> sorry, and where the not so good things stem from is what I was trying to say. So any, um, I don't want to say toxic because toxic is a very heavy word. But what I do want to say is any traits you don't really like or traits that you might have trouble accepting in your partner that your partner does that might be a bad habit that they need to cut off. Um, it's telling me that you will you guys will be able to understand that. You guys will be able to work on that with each other. Like instead of putting each other down, you guys are going to raise each other up. And um, there's a fly in here. Okay. And instead of um, putting each other down, you guys are going to be able to raise each other up. And it's overall going to be very beneficial for the two of you. But going back to the Ten of Swords, clarified by the Emperor with that heavy energy, I feel, I feel like you guys have learned a lot. I feel like that was you then, and this is you now. Like the Emperor, like you guys know what you want out of life. You guys know what you want in a partnership. <laughs> you guys know what you want out of your companion, you know. You guys aren't going to settle for less because you know damn well you don't deserve anyone less than what you want. So I applaud you. And then finally, we have the Ace of Wands and the Two of Wands. That was clarified by the Five of Cups. So the Ace of Wands, if you look at the imagery, this is someone who's willing to give to you. This is someone who is very passionate, you know. This is someone who doesn't mind doing things that they might not like in order to please you, in order to get on your good side, in order to show you that they care enough. This is someone who I do dare to say will please you, especially when you guys decide to be very intimate, you know, in your intimate moments, in the bedroom, whatever you want to say. This is someone who's ready to please you because they just love giving to you. This is someone who genuinely just loves loving you because you, I don't want to say complete them because they don't need you in their life to complete them because they already do that for themselves, just like you do that for yourself, you know, but you guys come together and you guys make this awesome duo of, you know, you guys have already done enough healing. You guys love each other enough. You guys are independent. However, you guys were drawn to each other because you vibrate at the same level, the same frequency of love and light. And so you guys are drawn together and this person loves to please you. And you might also like the role of pleasing them, which is very nice. And I congratulate you guys because it's so much fun. And so we also have the two of wands. So the fact that we have one and two, that's telling me that, again, your relationship is going to shift over time. And that's something that's not only going to make you feel better but it's also going to make you feel more comfortable and more intimate because you guys will be able to explore different things you'll be able to try new things and not be scared because you and your partner trust one another with the vulnerability with the amount of trust that takes you guys will have it which is very nice so the fact that we have two of wands here also if you look at the imagery they're looking at each other you know, it's not anything super crazy. You can enjoy the dull moments, quote unquote dull moments, like going grocery shopping, going to Walmart, kayaking. Like you guys could do the little things and have a lot of fun. But you can also do crazy things like go skydiving, go to 
Bora Bora if you wanted to, you know, travel the world and have a lot of fun. But you can also do the small things like stay at home, make some popcorn, watch a good movie, watch some Netflix, and that's also very fun for you guys, which is a very cool dynamic to have in a relationship because again, you have that ability to go from zero to 100 if you wanted to because there is that trust, because there is that love, because there is that stability and commitment to one another. You understand and respect each other's boundaries and you guys value each other and each other's worth as is, you know? And so that those two cards, the Ace of Wands and the Two of Wands being clarified by the Five of Cups, you need to stop feeling like you're on the wrong path or that there's someone better out there for you because there might be but you guys are meant to be with each other for a reason again we have the star and we have the moon card like you guys are both very intuitive about this connection you guys are very open about your feelings you guys are easy it's easy to communicate in the relationship about your feelings about your wants about what your needs your desires all that stuff it's very easy for the two of you guys because you guys don't want to settle for less so you guys both have this mindset and you guys compromise it's very nice However, you guys need to stop comparing this person to your past. As I mentioned before, you guys are completely two different versions. You guys know more, you've experienced more life as you are now than who you were back then and you need to, re you need to respect that, both for your sake and for your partner's sake if you guys do compare mentally. It's not a good habit to have. You should probably break it. And another thing too, don't cry over spilt milk. Don't cry about things that you accidentally did that hurts them. If anything, take this as an opportunity to start implementing things, you know, and changes that can help you prevent, you know, the same issues from arising again. You know, like, let's say I don't like the fact that my boyfriend, you know, always throws his clothes in the corner of the room instead of putting it in the laundry basket like I asked him to. So we get into a fight or whatever because of how messy the room is because of his clothes in the corner of my room, which I don't like. So instead of, you know, me getting super upset, you know, I could always just pick up the clothes and put it in the laundry basket or I can ask him to do it nicely and he can start implementing that. Or I could put a laundry basket in the corner because that's where he feels more comfortable. So little things like that, you know, like instead of crying over spilt milk, you guys are going to come to like a middle ground. You guys are going to start seeing eye to eye instead of seeing, you know, me versus you. You're going to see like us versus the problem, which is a great mindset to have in this growing relationship, which if you do want to pursue further, it does have the potential to get there as long as you guys both want that. I'm going to go ahead and start flipping oracle cards to get more clarity on your situation. The first one we have is the here and the now. So this person likes to focus on day by day they're not someone who likes to take it like year by year this person likes to focus today tomorrow you know it's like if you ask me what I'm hungry for I'm gonna tell you I don't know because it depends on the mood I'm in you know and I'm sure you guys probably are the same you know you can't ask me what I want to eat two weeks from now because I don't know so instead of focusing on two weeks from now, you guys are focusing day by day. Stop thinking about the past, where you went wrong. Stop thinking about your future. Let future you handle those future problems. Have faith in the person you are becoming to take care of those problems and focus on now, okay? The next one we have is poise. So you guys are looking for a new love to come in. You guys are waiting anxiously for this new love to come in. You guys want someone to give all your love to you. And I don't blame you, especially if you guys are hopeless romantics, because it can be hard, you know? You have so much love and all these great ideas and no one to give it to. Well, you will have someone to give it to. They're just taking their sweet time coming because, again, divine timing. And the next one we have is message in a bottle. So there could be someone who might try to reach out. I feel like it's this person, this toxic person who did you dirty, you know? They might try to reach out to you because they see you glowing. They see you working on yourself. They see how cool and how much of a badass you've become because you're independent now. You're doing things that make you happy and you don't want anything less than that. And, you know, people from the past, broken people are often attracted to that because they want to hurt you. They want to bring you down because they've done it before and they don't want you to do better than them. So this person from your past might try to reach out and say things they don't mean. You know, don't go back to someone who will never keep the same promises they made to you the first time 
the second time. You know, if this person cheated once, they'll probably cheat again. Whether it's emotional or physical, they'll do one of, you know, of the two, if not both. Um, so my advice to you is you left that situation for a reason. Why would you go back to it? Just because you're lonely? Because you missed them? Really analyze, sit down, think about it, analyze it. Because I wouldn't suggest you guys going back to a broken atmosphere if it doesn't serve you. And your last one is clean it up. I couldn't have said it better myself. Get rid of any emotions that make you feel like you are unworthy of love and that your ex who did you dirty is the only people that will ever love you. That is not true. I love you. Other people are out there probably think you're amazing. I think you're amazing. This person sure as hell thinks you're amazing. They think you're a god, a goddess, whatever you want to, you know, call yourself a Greek statue. Okay. <laughs> this is how they see you. So don't ever think you don't deserve love because love is coming. Okay, focus on yourself, heal yourself, do things that make you feel happy. And I promise you, that is the best way to attract this relationship, this beautiful relationship that wants to come in with time, of course. Your next oracle card says, bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. Wow, would you look at that? <laughs> bring love, you know, when you do things, do it with love. You know, stop thinking that there's not enough love people can give you. If anything, think about how much love there is to give. You know, look at yourself. Tell yourself you love yourself in the mirror every day. I promise you that'll make your confidence levels spike higher. I kid you not. It's amazing. Recommend. You guys should definitely do it. Look at people. Instead of complaining, learn to appreciate the good qualities. And you'll start to attract better people into your life. People who resonate with you. You know, people of your soul tribe. Potential partners. Your next one is bal balance spirituality and practicality. Full moon and Pisces. Which is funny because we have the moon card. So you guys could be dealing with a Pisces. This new person could be a Pisces. Your past person could be a Pisces. You could be a Pisces. Um, definitely don't overindulge. Look at things from a logical perspective. You know, everybody loves love. But don't convince yourself something is love when it's not. Okay? You don't want to be in a toxic situation again. That took you forever to get out of. So please be mindful. And... Yeah, please be mindful of who you go after, who you allow in. Um, your space, your energy is very valuable and you shouldn't just give it to anyone. I'm going to go ahead and start flipping these four whimsical lover oracles just to see what what's up with love. <laughs> Would you look at that? Number one, patience. Be patient as your future partner is slowly moving towards you. They are worth waiting for. Look at that. Even the card said it. <laughs> so have patience. Divine timing at its finest. Could you not? The next one is honeymoon phase. Your relationship is in the playful and passionate phase before things begin to settle down. I can't remember if I said honeymoon phase for this pile or for pile number one. Forgive me, I'm filming all of them like the same day. Um, so honeymoon phase, that's like candy to a kid, you know? It makes you feel so good. It makes you feel so happy. But after honeymoon phase, it things will, you know, dial down. You'll feel more comfortable. Things will get serious and you'll practically be able to see you know, what life will be like having this partner by your side. You know, you'll see the realistic side of that. However, enjoy honeymoon phase, you know, watch out for the red flags if there are red flags. Um, don't be naive. Obviously, I trust you guys. Um, but I feel like the very happy, go lucky feeling from it. You know, love is very beautiful and I wish you guys the best with love. The next one we have is marriage. A healthy, long-lasting relationship and commitment full of unconditional love. This person that's coming in could see you and you could see them as a potential lifelong partner. This is someone who is ready to give that to you if you're ready to receive it, you know. And, you know, judging how their connection goes between the two of you guys, of course, you guys are the ones in the relationship, not me. So definitely judge that. Play it by ear. If you guys get married, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know. And the next one we have is toxic. This relationship is toxic and can soon become dangerous if not stopped. I also feel like this was from the past just because this toxic, like to me, resonates with clean it up and the ten of swords because ten of swords is the backstabbing energy, the lying, the betrayal, the deceit. So you could have gone through a lot of toxic energy and you're like, I don't want you if you're toxic, goodbye. That was your reading pile number two. I love you guys so much. If this resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe. You know, please comment down below. Let me know what other videos you have in mind that you'd like me to do. 
I love you guys so much. Please let me know how this love story goes. Until next time, you guys. I hope you guys have a great day. I love you. Bye. Hello, those of you guys who chose pile number three. This is the beautiful amethyst you chose. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's go ahead and see what your future partner is like, what you can expect for your future relationship, what the overall energies are like, just the overall vibes, if you so will, you know? So we're going to go ahead and start with um, Page of Cups clarified by the Ace of Pentacles and the Justice, which is funny because we had one card and two of them popped out. This also happened in another, another one of the readings and in and, and another one of the piles too. So we also have the Nine of Cups clarified by the Ace of Swords. Then we have the Seven of Swords clarified by the Five of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles clarified by the Queen of Pentacles. So right off the bat, because we have the Page of Pentacles clarified by the Ace of Pentacles and Justice, I feel like this is gonna be like a lot of newness. Like, I feel like you guys are very intuitive and so is your future partner. You guys like to really think about a decision and really feel it out before you make any sudden movements towards, you know, jumping into a relationship or jumping into buying a house. I don't know why I heard that. Just jumping into anything that might seem really big, you guys tend to think about. And there's nothing wrong with that. You guys are also one to really feel emotions deeply is what I'm sensing. I also feel like you guys are very charismatic. Like, I feel like this person's gonna make you laugh a lot. The overall energy of um, the the relationship I'm feeling is it's not lighthearted in the aspect that um, you're not taken seriously, but more lighthearted in the aspect of the humor you guys share. You guys have the same <laughs> sense of humor, no matter how dark and twisted you might think you have a sense of humor, you might have it with this person. Um, I also feel like this page of cups, I feel like at first this person might come in to your reality and to your surroundings and you might not necessarily look at them as, as a typical partner. You know, you might not look at them and be like, you know, I want to date you. If anything, I feel like this is going to be a connection that grows over time. This is going to be a connection that little by little starts to amount to more and more and you guys find yourselves longing for one another. For the partnership you share with one another which is actually very nice i feel like there is no rush you go with the flow is would probably be the perfect thing to tell you guys because that's actually really accurate for for this pile i also feel like with the ace of pentacles i feel like you guys might be investing together not only physically like investing in a company and stuff like that but also investing in one another spiritually Feel like you guys are trying to help each other on your spiritual growth your spiritual journey um just kind of like healing is what i'm feeling and i'm also feeling like you guys might start a business together or you might egg one on or like let's say you have a business idea your partner might egg you on and hype you up and kind of like talk you into doing it but they also want to be a part of the business because they see how big it will become you know, they see the dynamic. Um, they also see how how fun it would be to have a business with you, you know. I also feel like with the Ace of Pentacles, I feel like right now you guys are also um, about to get a lot of financial abundance. This person could be wealthy or they could just be really good at managing their money or a little bit of both. I also feel like you're kind of the same. I feel like you're very aware of how you spend your money like you're aware of your spending habits which is nice and i also feel like some money or some financial abundance is coming in your way i feel like this will come almost not hand in hand but almost hand in hand um as you meet this person i feel like something will happen around the time you meet them that will allow you to feel a little bit more secure in your finances i also see with the justice card that also clarifies the page of cups this person could be a Libra on a very um, superficial scale. <laughs> this person could be a Libra or this relationship could be karmic. So it could be a relationship, um, I don't want to say short-lived because I'm not one to predict how long you and your person will be together um, because time is fluid. But I feel like this could be a karmic relationship for some of you guys who are asking or who already met this person 
And I'm saying this specifically because I feel like a lot of lessons are going to be involved. I feel like a lot of spiritual growth, as I mentioned before, is going to be involved. I feel like there's going to be a transformation. And both of you guys, when you guys come out of it, you guys will feel way better. Uh, and you guys will also transform and gain a lot of maturity and wisdom that a lot of people do not have in this life is what I'm feeling. I'm also feeling like you guys might be going through a transformation right before meeting this person. If this person is not a karmic partner, if this person isn't someone you've had a soul contract with, which I do think is the case in terms of having a soul contract with them. But I feel like you guys are going to help kind of like route each other on the path you want to be. But that that's not anything to be scared about, you know? One door opens, another one closes. So moving on to the Nine of Cups clarified by the Ace of Swords. So Nine of Cups always, to me, talks about manifestation. It talks about waiting, waiting for the last beautiful cup to come into your collection so you can close a chapter and begin anew. So right now you're waiting. You're waiting for the tide to pick up again. You're waiting for the waves to start crashing onto the seashore again. You're waiting for something to happen that'll give you a clue as to one, who this person might be, you know, in this relationship. And then two, for, for guidance on whether or not you should, you know, start the relationship if you should continue. And the only thing I can really tell you about that is trust your mind, trust your intuition, because the Ace of Swords is a card that tells you that's basically cutting through the bullshit. <laughs> like the Ace of Swords is someone who's very blunt. It's this energy that there's no more lies, you know, no more lies, just pure honesty. And that tied hand in hand with the Nine of Cups or clarifying the Nine of Cups to me is that telling me that this next cup that comes in, you know, right before the ending credits of the movie, you know, before you start a new movie, you're going to kind of catch a glimpse of this person and then you're going to catch a glimpse for their personality and, and um, just how they are as a person and you'll see how very straight to the point they are, how they don't settle for less, how they have a lot of goals that are very similar to yours, how you guys kind of like align with one another but it's up to you to make that decision you know because i feel like this person could be someone you've manifested or it could be a person who's going to help guide you to where you're trying to get if that makes sense i also feel like a lot of water air you know this is like yeah a lot of water air um i was about to say dirt but earth <laughs> is what i meant to say earth and um I'm not really sensing too much fire in this pile, if I'm honest. So if you are a fire a fire sign watching, um, this means that you might have more of these guys in your chart. Um, just because some of the other piles did have more fire than this one, if I'm being honest. But um, with the Ace of Swords, I feel like this is also like, uh, it reminds me of the phrase, like you're sharp with your tongue. Like sometimes you might hurt people without realizing just because you're very straightforward. Or this person could be very straightforward and it's telling me to tell you like when this relationship comes in try not to be so cutting edge you know try <laughs> i'm not trying to say to sugarcoat it but what i am trying to say is be be aware that other people have feelings too you know and they don't always see things from the same point of view as you do you know not everybody goes through the same experiences you do which is why we're all different which is why sometimes it can be hard to communicate how we feel but nonetheless and the next one you have is Seven of Swords, clarified by Five of Pentacles. And right off the bat, I feel like this is someone who, or this relationship, I feel like you guys are both questioning the intentions of one another. I feel like you guys both don't want to be left out. Like you guys really want to, to give it a chance, but I feel like you guys might not be focusing on the right things in the beginning. I feel like somebody might be too focused on their money and somebody else might be too focused on chasing the person who doesn't want them. Wow, that's kind of tough, huh? I, I'm just picking up those vibes just because if you look at the Seven of Swords, it's a person who is rather greedy. This is someone who's trying to steal something. So this person might try to steal your light if you're shining a lot in the aspect that if you're very, if you're very proud of who you are, if you're very humble, you know, you do things as you do them um, and you'd basically do it for you. Sometimes people see that and they get intimidated because you're so into your power, you're so confident, 
you know, you have so much self-love for your own body, for your own self, that they feel belittled. They feel, you know, um, they feel inferior. I hope that's the right word to you because you're greater than them. You're doing better things than they are and they might be older, the same age, or maybe younger than you. And they feel, yeah, I feel like this person has like an immature energy to them, if I'm honest. Like I feel this person is always trying to maybe one up you or in the relationship, this could be kind of hard for them to communicate their feelings because they might always try to run away when you try to point something out or they try to change the subject if you do try to point something out to them. And I feel like there is that miscommunication because if we look at the five of pentacles here, this is someone who feels very disconnected from the rest. So it, it could also be that you might be lacking spiritual faith or the person you're with might be lacking spiritual faith. And so you guys might feel disconnected from one another because in the beginning, maybe you thought everything was fine and dandy. And then the more you get to know them, you're having mixed feelings, you know, and it's okay. You know, that tends to happen a lot. You know, sometimes before we scratch, you know, the surface of anything, just looking on the outside, we're like, okay, 10 out of 10. And then you start to dig deeper and you're like, mm, eight out of 10, ooh, six out of 10, ooh, four out of 10. And you're just like, why is it getting worse? And not necessarily saying the person is getting worse, but more the connection you feel with that person, more the ability you have of being like, do I really want to wake up next to you every single day? Or would I rather be alone? And then when the universe sends me the right person, the right person comes when I attract them because I'm vibrating very high. I also feel like this person might have, um, I don't want to say commitment issues. I feel like they, they want to commit, but they don't want to commit to the extent you want them to. Um, just because I feel like maybe they've been burned in the past. Maybe they were left behind or ghosted in the past after having some intimate moments with this person they trusted. And so they don't want to do the same thing. However, in turn, they're hurting you by not being honest and authentic. The next um, card we have is the Page of Pentacles, clarified by the Queen of Pentacles. So this is like, if you if you put in the time and the work and the effort, you know, if you both do it, and not just you, because I know damn well you will, because you guys are watching this, because you guys are probably curious about your love life and hopeless romantics like me, I know you'll put in the work and effort any, any relationship takes, I know that. But what I'm trying to say is from their end, if they keep up, you know, because everybody's different, you know, some people lose faith, other people's will continue. You know, at the end of the day, we have free will. So what I'm trying to say is if this person decides to work on it and they decide to be like, you know what, Giovanna, you're right. You deserve my honesty. You deserve my vulnerability, this and that. We're engaging in a relationship. You're right. This person can go from like a little tiny tree to a big, beautiful tree that provides apples and fruits for you. This is someone who when they get their shit together, the relationship will blossom into something better. You know, you might start very young and then you can get older and as time goes on, the relationship becomes deeper and more enriched because not only the love and commitment and devotion you have for one another, right? Because it does take a long time to get there. It takes work from both sides to get there. And in order to get there, you have to be committed. You have to be disciplined. You have to be devoted, right? So you can start from a seedling and then end up a beautiful oak tree. So what I'm saying this is this relationship is going to go through multiple transformations if you allow it. Or if not, if not the relationship, you will. And I say this because I feel like you might take something, you might take wisdom, knowledge, understand red flags, understand people better. And if you leave the situation or you leave the relationship, you'll feel a lot better about yourself in general and about how you see the world and about how you connect to other people. And the same thing could be said about the relationship. You know, you guys start this, it flourishes, it keeps going, it ends up very beautiful. And maybe life gets in the way if it ends, right? And if not, if you guys want to stay together or work through it, then you can because you have free will. And so I'm gonna start flipping Oracle cards that I got for you guys. The first one we have is Thinker. So you guys are definitely doing a lot of thinking. Um, you might be reminiscing on the past just because of the seven of swords with the five of pentacles, or they might be they might be doing the dirty in terms of comparing you to their past, or you might be doing that, or both of you guys might be doing that. 
don't do that. <laughs> don't compare yourself to the past because you guys are two different people. You know a lot more information now than you did back then. So don't ever make yourself feel like shit when you look back because you have the beauty that is known as hindsight, okay? The next one we have is milk and honey. Milk and honey to me is this very young and nurturing energy. You know, you have you have this nurturing energy about you that you want to be there. You want to help them grow. You want to flourish them. You want to help them see the light and see the beauty that the world has. But I also feel like milk and honey is also talking about this very young atmosphere. Like the world is still beautiful. The world has so much to give this and that. Whereas when you get older, you can see the malice people have, their intentions, this and that. You know, I feel like this is a very young energy and it's clarified by the page of cups we have and the page of pentacles we have. The next one we have is be bold and make the first move, cardinal moon. I feel like this in this particular um, like spread or this particular pile to me is telling me to be bold and start loving yourself first. If you continue to love yourself and treat yourself the way you want other people to treat you, other people will come in and follow suit. And what this means is the more time you spend nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself, growing with yourself, self-reflecting, self-love, all that stuff, you're going to attract more people of the same vibration, okay? Because if you expect other people to do things, you constantly make yourself feel bad, you're only going to attract lonely, broken-hearted people towards you and hurt people only hurt people. So please don't do that. Focus on yourself if you need to and then attract beautiful and vibrant love into your life, okay? And the next card we have is a new romantic cycle begins, new moon and Libra. Yeah, they could be a Libra with the justice card. I feel like, again, we have two Libra cards. It could be, again, karmic. It could be, you know, this relationship is meant to teach you something, is meant to free up some karma from past life, if you believe in past life. Um, and it's supposed to help you move forward and bring in lessons you need to learn in order to fulfill this life, you know? The next one we have is Believe in the Impossible Blue Moon. This is hilarious because as I was telling the other piles, we have a blue moon on October 31st. Hopefully a lot of you guys are watching this by before October 31st. So you can do your manifestations. It's a great time to manifest. I think a blue moon happens every three years and it's happening in the sign of Taurus. So if you're a Taurus or you have Taurus in your chart, it'll probably affect those houses the most. I also pulled some whimsical lover oracles just to clarify the love messages for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and start flipping them. The first one we have is healing. We have focus on yourself, heal your current and old wounds as you begin the beautiful journey of self-love. This is funny because this is what I was telling you guys about. Yeah, self-healing. Healing is a linear, it's not a linear process. You know, you go up and you go down. Sometimes you fall into negative thinking patterns and then you dig yourself out of it and then you feel better, but sometimes you can go back. I know it all too well, you know. It happens to the best of us. It's okay, don't feel ashamed or alone. You're not alone, okay? The next one we have is temptation. Temptation is in the air as there might be second thoughts about the love your partner desires and who they share it with. So yeah, I feel like, again, there's kind of like that sneaky energy this person has or the indecisiveness like they want to commit but they don't know who to commit to like they view you as a good partner and as a good stable foundation who will eventually lead to something better in terms of growing and flourishing together however because they don't have their shit together and they're probably you know they have a lot of baggage and trauma whatever they've gone through um they don't know if they truly want to open all those unwounded heels to you the next one we have is forgive. Forgive your partners and yourself for the past mistakes you two have made. Forgive yourself for not knowing better until you knew better. That's honestly one of my favorite quotes I tend to live by just because sometimes we get stuck in the moment when we look back at the past and we start to criticize yourself. We're like, oh my God, you're so stupid. Like, why did you do this? You shouldn't have done this, this and that, whatever. But you didn't know better in the moment. So stop being so hard on yourself, okay? Because I, I can do that too sometimes. And our last card says, in love. Both partners in this connection love one another deeply and unconditionally. So again, you do have the potential for true love. It's just whether or not you want to work on it. And if it's not with this person, you will fall in love with yourself. And let me tell you, there's nothing more beautiful than falling in love with yourself. Take yourself on a date. Nourish yourself. 
you feel like eating Chinese food, go get Chinese food. You want to eat Italian, you know, some nice pasta, go eat Italian. Get some nice pasta or sushi. I love sushi too. Um, but yeah, this is your messages pile number three. I hope this resonated. Please like, comment, and subscribe if it did. It means the world if you do. I love talking to you guys. If you have any reading suggestions you'd like me to do, go ahead and leave them down below. I loved listening to you guys and whatever feedback you guys have for me. It honestly makes my day. I love you guys so much and I hope you guys have a great day. Until next time, bye guys!